Introduction At 11.47pm on July 25th, 1978, Louise Brown was born. Louise was the first human to be born by in vitro fertilisation, IVF, a technique that allows couples with reproductive problems to have children. In IVF, egg and sperm cells are taken from the parents and mixed together in a dish in a laboratory. Fertilised embryos are allowed to develop for a small number of days before being returned into the mother's uterus to complete the pregnancy. Ever since this technology was first used, it was thought that having access to embryos outside of the body, in the lab, provided a perfect opportunity for genetic testing to see if the embryos contained genetic mutations, which could cause disease. It wasn't until 1989 that genetic testing technologies had caught up with IVF. A technique called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PGD, allows embryos to be tested for serious genetic abnormalities, with only healthy embryos then being returned to the mother's womb. How does it work? The first stage of PGD is the same as for IVF. Egg and sperm cells are collected from the parents. Egg donation is a long and difficult process involving hormone injections and a medical procedure. There are potential side effects, including mood swings, headaches, night sweats, hot flushes, bloatedness and nausea. Once they have been collected, the egg and sperm cells are mixed together in a Petri dish. For PGD, usually a single sperm cell is used in a process called intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This is to avoid there being any DNA contamination from other sperm cells present, which could affect the testing stage. Once the egg has been fertilised, it is allowed to begin dividing and to develop into the laboratory for two to three days. When the embryo has reached the eight cell stage, a single cell is removed using a small pipette. This process is called an embryo biopsy. This does not affect the development of the embryo. At this stage of development, all the cells are described as being totipotent, which means they are still able to divide and develop into every cell type in the human body. This cell is tested to see if the developing embryo has any errors. This testing can be done in a number of ways, either to look for a specific mutation or to find chromosomal abnormalities. If there is a family history of a known genetic mutation, the cell can be tested for the presence or absence of that particular mutation using a technology called polymerase chain reaction, PCR. Chromosomal abnormalities can be detected by a technique called fluorescent in situ hybridization, FISH, which tags particular sections of DNA, which can then be seen under a fluorescent microscope. Once they have been tested, an embryo, or sometimes two, that meet the criteria are transferred into the mother's uterus. Other embryos, free of the genetic abnormality, can be frozen for future rounds of transfer if the first embryo does not result in pregnancy. Unwanted embryos can be donated to scientific research or destroyed. Some people are morally opposed to the destruction of embryos. Why use PGD? The main use for PGD is to help people who have a family history of inherited disease to have children who do not have that condition. Genetic diseases such as cystic fibrosis, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and thalassemia can be avoided using PGD. Carriers of genetic diseases do have alternative options to PGD, including amniocentesis, chorionic villus sampling, CVS, using sperm and or egg donors, or adoption. CVS removes a small piece of the placenta at about 12 weeks of pregnancy for testing. 
amniocentesis tests the amniotic fluid at between the 15th and 20th week. Both procedures have a small risk of miscarriage, CVS being very slightly higher. In the case of using a donor, the child would not share genetic material with one of the parents. With adoption, the child would not share any genetic material with the parents. Pre-implantation genetic screening, PGS, looks at whole chromosomes rather than just at individual genes. It is thought that many miscarriages and unexplained infertility issues are caused by chromosomal conditions which PGS can identify. PGS is harder to interpret and has a higher rate of false positive results, but can be used to find a wider range of potential health problems caused by chromosomal abnormalities. One example is Down syndrome, which is caused by having an extra copy of chromosome 21. Some people question whether it is ethical to select against embryos with Down syndrome. However, PGD can also be used for other purposes, which is where it becomes more controversial. One example is what are known as saviour siblings. This is when an embryo is selected to ensure it will be a suitable cell donor for an older sibling. Saviour siblings are able to donate blood stem cells from the umbilical cord, which can be used to treat certain diseases. If there is not enough to treat the sibling, the younger child could be subjected to a painful bone marrow transplant if the parents choose to do so. Decisions such as this put a psychological strain on both the parents and the child and cause many to question whether the use of PGD to select for saviour siblings is an acceptable use. There are also voices of concern when it comes to what are known as lower penetrance disorders, such as hereditary breast cancer. These are genetic conditions which may raise the risk of getting a particular disease, but does not always result in the person getting the disease. Conditions like this are very hard to predict, and so it is hard to know where to draw the line when considering risk factor genes. Many consider it unethical to select against an embryo which is likely to have had a full and healthy life. Other people believe that the psychological burden of knowing you might develop a disease warrants use of a PGD in this way. One of the most controversial uses of PGD is for what is known as social sex selection. Sometimes a disease will only affect one sex and therefore it would be seen as reasonable to choose an embryo on this basis. However, some couples may want to choose the sex of their baby for other reasons such as preference, family balancing, or even to replace a lost child. Selecting embryos for this reason is not currently allowed. In the UK, it is currently illegal to test embryos for any reason other than to avoid a serious medical condition. But who knows what may be allowed in the future? The decisions about what conditions should be allowed to be selected for are often controversial. Many people feel it devalues the life of people living with these conditions. There have been some cases where couples have asked to select for a disability so that their child is similar to them. One example is to select an embryo with a hearing impairment experienced by both parents. Currently, the Human Fertilisation and Embryology Authority, HFEA, has to licence the use of PGD for each new condition. In this way, it can be flexible when new diseases are discovered and still be able to stop what they consider unacceptable uses. The HFEA listens to scientists, medics, religious leaders and philosophers when making decisions about acceptable and unacceptable uses. These need to be debated by a wide range of people to ensure that as a society we are happy with how this technology is used.